Hi, Charles Cherney here, and I'm having you meet me in Harvard Square today, which we're looking at here on the map. So Harvard Square, it's interesting. The squares of Cambridge are not squares. Rather, they are intersections that uh, move out in every direction. And so there's no clear defined boundaries that define any square. Harvard Square is the granddaddy square of the squares of Cambridge. And many people think of it as the heart of Cambridge. And in the heart of Harvard Square is the Harvard Square T station here in the center of the map. And Harvard Square really takes its identity from this intersection where Massachusetts Avenue is intersecting with uh, JFK Street and Brattle Street. So these three streets uh, congregate in the main intersection at the Harvard Square T station. And it's a classic New England intersection in that it doesn't feature any right angles. It's a little disorientating to the first time visitor, but this is Harvard Square. And of course, what makes Harvard Square, Harvard Square is its proximity to Harvard itself. And so this is Harvard Yard, which we see here, the large green space right next to the heart of Harvard Square. And this is Massachusetts Avenue running along its border. Again, this is another map uh, from the city of Harvard Square, and it shows with a little more definition, uh, you know, the identifying T station in the heart of Harvard Square. This is JFK Street, which runs down to the Charles River. Here's Brattle Street, which bends around the corner and heads out into the heart of West Cambridge. And then to the east, if you will, is Massachusetts Avenue running along the side of Harvard Yard here and then continuing to Central Square and on into Boston. So this gives you a general sense of the neighborhood. Here I am at my real estate office in Harvard Square Compass. I'm standing out front of our office at 1100 Massachusetts Avenue. And I'm fortunate to have an office in Harvard Square. It's very convenient for meeting people and it's a wonderful place to come to work. And prior to being at Compass, I was at another real estate office, Hammond Real Estate, also located once upon a time in Harvard Square. So my entire real estate career over the last 20 plus years has found me in Harvard Square and I appreciate the opportunity to, to work and visit the square on a on a regular basis. As you walk down Massachusetts Avenue from my office towards the heart of Harvard Square, you go by the old Cambridge Baptist Church seen here. And this dates from the 1800s. The uh, Tiffany stained glass windows are something special. And the church is home to the Jose Mateo Ballet Theater Troupe. And I have uh, fond memories of taking our daughter here as a young girl for ballet lessons. On Massachusetts Avenue, as you make your way into the heart of Harvard Square, there are a number of shop services and restaurants. We're looking here at Zinnikin's, a Belgian waffle establishment. And uh, on the back side of it on Arrow Street is a new cafe, Faro, pictured here that opened in December of 2022. It's nice to see this cafe open and uh, I'm, missing and always will Cafe Pamplona that once upon a time lived in Harvard Square, not far from this new cafe. So everything is always changing and it's nice to see a wonderful newcomer in the way of this cafe. Of course, a mainstay on Mass Ave as you make your way into the heart of Harvard Square is Harvard Bookstore, pictured here. And on this uh, summer day when I took these photos, it had the scaffolding as they're working on the building. And I do believe I've probably spent more time and money <laughs> in this bookstore than any other in my life. It's always a treat to walk by it, to go in, and I'm grateful for it as it's the primary bookstore for the square. Behind it on Plimpton Street, around the corner, if you will, is the Grolier, the oldest all poetry bookshop in the United States that dates from 1927. And I'm Grateful that uh, the Grolier is still with us. As you continue down Massachusetts Avenue, you go by uh, Tate, the bakery and cafe. This is part and parcel of 
a group of um, Tate bakery cafes throughout greater Boston. And it's nice to see in recent years that in season they've introduced outdoor se seating, as you see here, and it makes for a lively streetscape and Tate is always busy. Uh, and it's a, it's been around for a couple of years now in the square and I'm grateful for it. You know, we don't see too many old school originals and here's one, Levitt and Pierce, the store dates from 1883. And, you know, primarily they sell uh, tobacco and pipes and, uh, but they do have other things as well, gifts and games. And uh, it's just an experience to walk into this shop. I remember in the 1990s, that they used to post the uh, the crew team uh, schedule in the window for Harvard students to know when they would be getting on the water. So this is just a sort of a time travel experience to go in here. And uh, not every original store is still in Harvard Square, but this is one that has survived the test of time. Its neighbor nearby is Jay August selling uh, Harvard insignia wear to tourists and you can see in the window what they offer and it's you know always busy it's not uncommon for a bus to pull up nearby and for a lot of tourists to get out and hop in this t-shirt and shirt shop selling harvard stuff and obviously harvard is a big part of harvard square cambridge trust in the heart of harvard square has been around forever and this is their building which sits next to uh, the main intersection that we're approaching here in this picture, which shows us the outdoor seating area at Smith Plaza with the blue bikes in front of it. And you can see the Harvard Square Plaza and T Station in the distance. This is a shot of the Smith Campus Center. This used to be known as Holyoke Center. And in recent years, it was renovated and made to be more inviting inside for students as there are places to sit and study and a number of eating establishments and you know for years what's made this sort of famous is this outdoor seating area which has always been a magnet for people who come to play chess and you can see a couple tables here with some games going on and sort of a long tradition of outdoor chess at this location in the absolute heart of harvard square in front of the smith campus center the blue bikes have come along in more recent years which allow visitors and residents for that matter to grab a bike and then you can return it at another station in the uh, city. So it's a nice way to come and go. You can see the out of town news kiosk in the distance, which is under renovation. This uh, pedestrian crossing takes you across Massachusetts Avenue from in front of the Smith Center campus plaza to Harvard Yard, and you can see Harvard Yard here as you step into uh, the yard. And I'm including it because Harvard Yard is really part and parcel of the Harvard Square experience, even though it's a place apart. You know, there's a hushed silence that you experience when you cross from the square and it's hustle and bustle into the quiet confines of Harvard Yard. It's such an incredible place not to be missed. Beautiful old trees. These are freshman dormitories that we're looking at that surround uh, Harvard Yard. And it's famous, of course, for the Harvard statue pictured here. And there's always a group of visitors right at uh, the base coming to see it. This is Thayer Hall, one of the freshman dorms. And this is where I lived as a freshman at Harvard in the mid 1980s. Johnston Gate is the entrance, if you will, to Harvard Yard on the Massachusetts Avenue side that brings visitors in. And when people are moving in and out of the square, I'm sorry, the yard, uh, they open the gates so people can drive in. And uh, that's an annual ritual for freshmen moving into Harvard Yard. Massachusetts Hall is one of the buildings found in Harvard Yard pictured here. And the president of Harvard has her office on the main level, uh, the first floor, and then freshman students live on the floors above. Again, just another sh shot showing the pathways that crisscross Harvard Yard 
it's really a magical place and not to be missed when you are experiencing a visit to Harvard Square. Here is that out of town news kiosk uh, behind the storm fencing here, which is under renovation. And for years, this was, as its name makes known, a news kiosk. And uh, you could go in and buy a newspaper or magazine from anywhere in the world. And it's just remarkable to think in 2023, you cannot buy a newspaper now in Harvard Square anywhere, to the best of my knowledge. That's how much the world has changed. And when this kiosk reopens, the out of town news kiosk, it will be run by the city. And I believe they'll probably have some programming to allow it to serve different purposes and functions. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. You can see the visitor information center adjacent to it and student led tours begin here. You know, I imagine the the kiosk, the information center we're looking at will play out with the addition of the out-of-town news plaza. So you can see people entering and exiting the subway uh, to the right in this photo. And here is uh, the entrance that takes you down to the Red Line subway with service out to Davis Square and beyond to Elwife and into the city of Boston. It's hard to believe this is the pit <clears throat> as it was known for many years reinvented now as the plaza uh, with these colorful chairs and umbrellas. So, you know, the city is seeking to reinvent the whole area. The pit for many years was a magnet for all sorts of counterculture life. And, you know, it's just remarkable to see it now as Candy Cane Lane here. And uh, look, things never stay the same. Change is part of life. And I have a feeling once the kiosk opens that the whole center of Harvard Square will be injected with some vitality. I'm sure everyone will be grateful for the storm fencing to come down and the construction to be completed. Here we're looking at the main intersection, if you will, in the heart of Harvard Square. And <clears throat> this is where Brattle Street, Massachusetts Avenue and JFK Street meet. It's a big intersection. And uh, on the Brattle Street side here, we're looking at Cardulo's Gourmet uh, Shop, this European uh, grocery, serves food, beer, wine, cheese, and has a deli bar. And it's a mainstay that's been around for some time. On the JFK Street side of Harvard Square is the Russell House Tavern, which is enjoying outdoor seating since outdoor seating has emerged in season in the last couple of years, which is nice. And here's a shot showing us the view from the heart of Harvard Square down JFK Street in the direction of the Charles River. And you can see there's various shops, services, and restaurants. And then as we look across JFK Street towards Brattle in this photo, we see Starbucks, which moved to this location recently, taking over the uh, Curious George bookstore space that stood in its place before. And you can see the traffic and people uh, waiting for the light at the heart of Harvard Square. As you make your way down Brattle Street, uh, you come upon the Harvard Coop, which otherwise has a building facing directly on Massachusetts Avenue, which takes you into the bookstore. Off Brattle Street, you enter uh, the Coop here at the corner of the alleyway known as Palmer Street. And in, into this entrance, you find your way into a clothing store where the Coop is selling Harvard insignia wear like J. August. This shot shows us Palmer Street. And I've often thought that Palmer Street is a missed opportunity. It could be an intensely lively place that the city could invest in to create a more interesting urban fabric and streetscape. There are, as you can see, a few places to sit. And this is a view down the full length of Palmer, where there's yet another door into the Coop on the right and another one further down on the left. So it does have a back alley vibe, and I'm sorry that the city hasn't done more to spruce this up, to invite people in, to make it a pedestrian alley. It could be so much more compelling and to give the square a beating heart. On Palmer Street is Club Passim, and this is a famous folk music club that started actually uh, 
back in 1958 on Mount Auburn Street as Club 47, and it moved here to Palmer Street in uh, 1963. And it changed its name to Passim in 1969, and then it changed its name in turn in 1994 to Club Passim. I've had the good fortune to see a number of shows here over the years. And of course, in its original location on Mount Auburn Street, when it was known as Club 47, Joan Baez and Bob Dylan and others performed there. So there's a roll call of famous people who've played here over the years and still play here even today. I do miss that once upon a time in recent years, there was a restaurant by day here, Veggie Galaxy, which is no more at this location, but still they have active shows and a regular calendar and it's a special place to see a show. Palmer Street ends at Church Street, which we're looking at here, where there's a number of renovated buildings that serve now shops and restaurants. I love the little Lizzie's ice cream tucked in between here. And the Sinclair, is found on Church Street, where this is a larger music venue with uh, a regular menu of uh, performers, and uh, it's a great place to see a show, and again, a reason to come into Harvard Square. It's sort of sad that a number of years ago, the movie theater on Church Street closed and is still sort of paralyzed in terms of what it will be next. It would be great to see that renovated and reopened and serving again as a purpose for people to come into Harvard Square. But for the moment, the Sinclair is here and it does draw a regular crowd with its regular programming of shows. You know, there's so many interesting little shops and restaurants even still in Harvard Square today. We're looking at uh, Bond, a wine bar on a Church Street, very inviting with this little outdoor seating area. Its neighbor is the Swiss watchmaker, which has been around forever. And I've gone in here to have my watch serviced, as have so many others. Across from those establishments on Church Street is the Cambridge Artists Cooperative. And then down at the corner of Church and Brattle is Wholesome Fresh. This used to be Sage. So there's a long history of this address being uh, a supermarket. You know, here they've prepared more takeaway foods, which is in keeping with the world we live in. It's actually called the Sage Building, and I'm glad they survived the pandemic and continue to serve Harvard Square. You know, there are a few old time establishments in Harvard Square that continue to survive. And so we're looking at Hillside Cleaners and a neighboring barbershop on Brattle Street. And it's remarkable that they're still going strong. You know, so some things change and some remain the same in Harvard Square over time. Uh, one mainstay that's been around for a long time is the Brattle Movie Theater. And this is the entrance on Brattle Street uh, in the heart of Harvard Square. And you step down, uh, you can see here, to the ticket window to enter the movie theater. And uh, this is the interior. You can see that the Casablanca restaurant now closed, the murals that once were in the restaurant were moved to the theater, which is great to preserve them. This is just a picture I took uh, sitting in the theater. I've loved going here for over 30 years. And <clears throat> that's actually a still of one of my favorite movies, The Young Girls of Roquefort. Great to see this and so many other films at the Brattle over the years. It's a single screen draws a crowd, and I'm grateful it's still with us. The Cambridge Center of Adult Education has a couple of addresses in Harvard Square. Here we are at 42 Brattle, and this is their main building. And then they have, in addition, taken over the Blacksmith House and have additional space here on Brattle Street. The Harvard School of Continuing Ed, the Extension School, has its main offices on Brattle Street in Harvard Square. This is the entrance to their office. And there are other places on Brattle Street that people call home. This is a building people live in on Brattle Street, the Brattle Arms. It's a, a rental building. And again, there are restaurants peppered in and around Harvard Square. On Brattle Street here is Toscano. This is a, a particular favorite of mine and my family. It's always busy. It has a nice vibe. They have a bar area and a restaurant area. And uh, 
they can open those windows on a summer's night, which is nice. Brattle Square Florist, which for many years was in the absolute heart of Harvard Square, uh, has now moved around the corner uh, to this location next to Toscano. And I'm grateful that it's survived. It's been with us since 1917. And there was some question as to whether it would make it through the pandemic. And it has. It's in this new location adjacent to Toscano. And its neighbor is L.A. Burdick's, uh, a chocolate purveyor and cafe. And uh, it's always a treat to go into Burdick's. As you continue down Brattle Street towards the neighborhood of residential homes on Brattle, you come upon the American Repertory Theater, ART or ART for short. This is the Harvard Radcliffe Dramatic Club the Loeb Drama Center started by uh, Richard Brewstein. And they have a nice repertory theater with regular uh, productions on their annual calendar. And, uh, you know, it's a nice piece to the Harvard Square equation. Its neighbor is this beautiful house, Greenleaf House, that I believe is home to the Radcliffe Dean, which has this beautiful side yard between itself and the American Repertory Theater. And it's really remarkable that you're in a city center when you're looking at this open expanse of well-maintained green space. So again, just to help orientate you, you know, we walk down Palmer Street, this is Church Street, and then we've been going up Brattle. Here is L.A. Burdick's on the map, and it's adjacent to the Brattle Square Florist and next to Toscano. And then as you go up Brattle, Here's the theater. I meant to show the Longleaf House, and it's across the street from Radcliffe Yard, which I'm about to take us into, which is surrounded by a number of Harvard buildings, including the Harvard Graduate School of Education, uh, which is on this side of Brattle. So let's just take a look. So I'm on Brattle Street here, looking into one of several entrances to Radcliffe Yard and as you come in, there's a sculpture garden, which is well-maintained, very lovely. And here we are in Redcliffe Yard. That's the Naval Center in the distance. And it's this beautiful green space surrounded by Harvard buildings. And again, we can see here the Harvard Graduate School of Education in the distance. So again, in addition to Harvard Yard, which we were in earlier, there's Radcliffe Yard here on the other end of the square with all these beautiful buildings, well-maintained, some brick, some wood frame. It's just great. As you come back out of Radcliffe Yard and find your way back up Brattle Street, more towards the center of Harvard Square, there's another blue bike station, which we see here. This is a picture of me at the top of Winthrop Street, another alleyway, if you will, in Harvard Square that connects through to JFK Street. Uh, and nearby uh, to that Winthrop Street entrance are a couple of mainstays. Falafel Corner is a place I often go for a takeaway lunch. And next to it is Charlie's Kitchen, a uh, classic dive, if you will, and uh, made famous by the film Goodwill Hunting when Matt Damon and Ben Affleck filmed a famous scene in the film in this long-standing uh, burger dive joint. They also taking are taking advantage of the outdoor seating that's popped up in recent years in Harvard Square. Beyond uh, Charlie's Kitchen in the distance on the further side is the luxury Charles Hotel pictured here. And uh, on the day that I was taking photos, I noticed that this garden bar, so-called, was uh, getting ready to open for the first time. So this is a new addition to the courtyard in season for the Charles Hotel. This is one of several entrances that you see here to the Charles. And, and they have their own internal courtyard, which you can see here you walk up into, and it's pictured here. And uh, it's a great five-star hotel. As you continue uh, back towards JFK Street, its neighbor is the Kennedy School of Government, and it's grown and expanded in recent years. And uh, this is one of the newer buildings that takes you into an internal courtyard. So the Kennedy School of Government 
at Harvard is a part of the Harvard Square experience. As you get back to JFK Street, there's a number of Harvard buildings that are found here and they're very well maintained and add a sense of history to the square as you get a sense of from this photo. And as you walk up JFK Street back towards the T station, you know, there are a number of shop services and restaurants. You can see Shea's Wine Bar here, which is a long time mainstay. A new, more recent newcomer is Black Sheep Bagel Cafe on JFK. It's been around now for enough years to become port -a -call and main stay in uh, Harvard Square. And uh, it's great to see, again, a newcomer establish an identity in Harvard Square and become a regular. As you go up JFK Street, there's this pocket park called Winthrop Park with a pathway seen here that connects to uh, Winthrop Street. And, uh, you know, there are places to sit and sometimes in summertime there is music here. Here's an art installation uh, that uh, I took a photo of on my day walking through the square. And then as you come up Mount JFK Street, you cross Mount Auburn. And then again, there's more shop services and restaurants. Here's a flower shop, which is very inviting. This used to be a bookstore. Now it's a flower shop. And then uh, on Dunster Street, crossing Mount Auburn is the Signet Society. This is a Harvard Arts Group clubhouse. And I was fortunate enough to be a member of this as a student and uh, am grateful to maintain a connection to this building and its clubhouse. So we're back here in uh, the heart of Harvard Square in front of the Smith Campus Center. And uh, I thought it would be nice to finish up here. You know, Harvard Square, there's just so much to it. It's just such a wonderful place to come and explore. I'm grateful that my office is located here and that I'm in the square on a regular basis. And I hope that this tour uh, gives you a taste. I mean, the best way to experience Harvard Square is to come see it yourself and to walk around and just uh, experience getting lost and letting your feet find your way to all that make up Harvard Square. It's a very special place. It does have a strong sense of place. It's always changing. Uh, there's things to love about it and things to wish for, but there's no denying it's an actual, genuine, real place that gives Cambridge, Massachusetts a strong sense of identity. And it's the place that visitors begin a visit to Cambridge, generally speaking. And I hope if you're coming to Cambridge that you'll visit Harvard Square. My name is Charles Cherney and I am a top residential real estate agent serving buyers and sellers in Cambridge and neighboring Somerville. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of the Harvard Square area. Reach out at any time by text, telephone, or email if I can help you buy the right home or sell for the best price and to answer your questions about the market, your home, and the community and to be of further assistance in helping you delve into Harvard Square. Be in touch.